So here we are at Stamford Hall and it's been a complete washout and it's been cancelled. However, we're going to see what cars are here today because there are some EVs here. Um, so we're going to see what we can find on what is a very sad day. We're at the EV Festival and as a lot of people know, it was a bit of a washout. However, we were standing here chatting and this uh, very interesting our bath or what we thought was a bath started rolling past and it was electric. So we're here with Tony and we're gonna find out more. So I'd never seen one of these before. So luckily we've got Tony to tell us a little bit more about it. So Tony, what, what is this? Well, it's a 1972 Seat 750, which is a Spanish-built Fiat 600. Right, OK. Of which there were millions made, uh, which I bought in Spain because it was rust-free from southern, or southern Spain. It was fairly rust-free. And you said it was the bigger brother of the 500? It, it's a bit slightly bigger than the 500. It was a forerunner to the 500, new, new, new over 500. It's the forerunner to it, but slightly bigger and was made by the millions in Italy and Spain. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've never seen one before and I, you've done some, some subtle upgrades on it, but yeah, it was literally just driving along. We saw it come, you know, come down the pathway here and we were all in awe, I certainly was, in terms of seeing what is a beautiful classic car. And it went past with no noise. Well, I, so. wanted, I wanted to do an electric vehicle. I've done lots of other, mainly Jaguars. Yeah and because I'm long retired anyway and I wanted to do and I thought I don't know, electric car and I passed my driving test my dad had one of these yeah he bought new in 64 and it was the family car so there was my mum and dad and my brother and myself this was the family car oh wow well, you, you think wow well, you know. I was gonna say I mean I was, I was sat in there earlier and what you've done is you've put very much like the TVR, you put some MX-5 heated seats in there. I yeah. don't know if people can see that. There's there we no, go. There's no heater, of course, because all the water cooling system's gone. So rather than putting an additional electric heater, I thought, well, heat at source, Master MX-5 seats. Absolutely, much more efficient. So if you t uh, take us around to the back, can you show us what the, or tell us, tell us what the specification sure. of the so conversion used, contains? There used to be a 750cc four-cylinder water-cooled engine there, petrol engine. Well done. That was that was no good anyway, so we got rid of that. Here we've got an adapter plate which mates the electric motor, the HP or AC20 motor, to the existing or the original Seat Fiat gearbox and transaxle. So that is all the all the, the drivetrain, if you like, is all as per original. The power source is the only thing that's changed. Yeah. Okay, and. Um... Is this a, That's a Curtis. Curtis controller? Curtis controller controls the, so it's an AC motor. So the 72 volt from the battery pack into the Curtis. Yeah. Three phase electricity coming out of it there. Yeah. And with all whatever it does inside to control throttle move, there's your throttle. Yeah. Yeah, it's spotted that it had a EV, uh, uh, EV, zero EV uh, logo on it normal 12 volt battery system which just does all the car stuff which yeah you, which you've got to do and there's the dc to dc battery charger so the main big power pack powers charges the 12 volt system yeah and you've got the thunderstruck um the thunderstruck charger yeah, from the, this it plugs into the mains charges overnight right on a 13 amp socket yeah and uh, currently you've got the type one charging type just one there charges, I think we're doing a mistake, I should change it to a Type 2, so I should do that really. And uh, you were saying earlier that it is actually for sale as well? It's for sale. Yeah. Excellent. And uh, what, what's the price? What are you thinking? I'd like 19 pounds. 19. I, re I reckon definitely 25. Let, let's bump it up a bit. Well, do what you want to get. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. Oh, whatever you want. It, yeah. I, I, I just, I, all I want back from it is what it owes me. No, it's really fair it. enough. Good man. And um, I think you had a, a, a fault because... Uh, we just had a fault on the BMS system, which Richard's kindly had a look at and fixed. Yes, yeah. you're in the right place for EV conversions yeah. at the moment. Well, I've got the right bloke, <laughs> haven't we? Yeah. Um, yes, Richard from Electric Classic Cars. Yeah, he, he was very interested in the conversion because you actually purchased uh, a lot of the equipment I bought, from... I bought, I bought most of the stuff from him. Yeah. Fact, yeah. 
Excellent. And yeah, I went to go and grab my camera, and he was he was in the uh, back of the engine bay uh, with his laptop. Yeah. And he'd already solved your problem, which is yeah. uh, which is great. Um, so yeah. And um, what about the battery pack? So you've uh, right. What we have then is behind this rear seat backrest there. There's, there's one vertically mounted. Yeah. The rear seat squab, that's just a padded board. The springs and everything have gone because another battery pack sits under there. Yeah. And under the front... There's the... That's the charger, charger lead. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, so like a con, uh, an adapter yeah, for the Type-C. Yeah. And then one of the battery packs. So there's, the other two are just the same as that. So it's kind of a makeshift battery box, is it? Yeah, I take it. Yeah, just made it fit, really. Okay. I could have put two in the front, but I, I didn't like the weight, weight, possible weight imbalance. Really. Right. So I think what we've got is thereabouts something similar to what was the original weight, you know, with the engine at the rear, with two battery packs now at the rear. The yeah. full petrol tank equates pretty well to that battery there. So, okay. Yeah. Do you worry about the safety? Because I know that you know the ideal is to have some form of battery box from a you know from a safety point of yeah. view and that sort of thing. Is it something that you you thought about when you were doing the conversion? No, I did. I just wanted to sort of stick it together, get it going, really. But right. you know, it's, it's a modification, ongoing modification, and you could perhaps look at a better box there. Yeah. Uh, because it is a bit, you know, yeah, a bit vulnerable, I guess. Yeah. I mean, the, the actual car is an is a lovely example. the The bodywork is fantastic. Have you done anything to the bodywork? Very, at all? very little. It came from it came from Spain um, with a few dents in it. Yeah. Few, but no rust, which was the key. Yeah, it's it's absolutely it's, lovely. And, and we, it, was, it was white. And it, it was, was white. And so I painted it. Yeah, I, I quite like the colour. It's a well, it's, it's quite retro, isn't it? Absolutely re 1970, bang on. Yeah, no, absolutely. Cositano yeah. yellow. That yeah. Way. Let's go inside because I've got some questions to ask you about the inside, if that's all right. Yeah. Nice and cosy in here. We're rubbing shoulders a bit here, Tony. Yeah, so not the we're biggest, making friends. Not the uh, best, I'm afraid. <laughs> no, it's, it's great. And so you've got a few uh, few uh, controls here. So this is forwards to backwards, I suppose. Forwards, reverse, switch. And what's the red one there? That is for programming the different parameters, the acceleration rate and okay. regen braking efforts and all the rest of it. You can reprogram using that button and this little dial in here. Ah, okay. And this is for the... That's just normal lighting. And that's the windscreen washers. Wind, that's wiper, wipers. <laughs> wipers. Washers. I put a hazard on. It did, it's, it's of an age where it doesn't require it, but I put one on anyway. It seemed a good thing to do. So there's hazards. Dip and main beam. Yeah. And and you've, the indicators and that's about it and you've got uh, a very short gear shift here right well all all we do is uh, the procedure is you put your foot on the brake yeah stick it in third yeah switch on the contactor you hear the contact well I'll, let me get up here so what mm. year is this car 72 72 okay but there's yeah i must admit when you had uh, the family in here it must have been a real tight squeeze well we never thought so in the back in the 60s i passed my test in one of these as well oh, wow. in oh si yeah i heard the contactors in 65 there's the contactor in my dad's thing in 65 i passed my test in one so uh so there's the contactor in uh i'll just put it in neutral And that is, that'll tell us what the revs are. Somewhere on there. Okay. It, it, it sits out, there we are, 6,400 RPM, that is. Oh, wow. I'll that, tell you what, that sounds fantastic. And, that'll, and people that, say that electric cars don't make noise. Well, that corresponds with the gearing to about 78 miles an hour. Wow. But I'm, I don't want to go at 78 miles an hour in this, thank you. So maybe I'll see you up at Santa Pod. Yeah. But it's quite lively, it nips, you know, nips, yeah. nips off the mark. If you want quicker acceleration, you can just stick it in second and do it. Yeah. But of course it runs out of revs quite quickly then. Oh, that's very cool. No, thanks for showing us this. It's, it, yeah, I think it must be a real hoot to drive, I'm sure. Yeah, nice little thing really, ideally in the town. Mm. I use it when I go and play golf, just throw the clubs there and the thing in the back. And away you go. Wonderful.
So yeah, thank you very much, Tony, for uh, showing us your car. And yeah, hopefully we can see when it's uh, a little bit drier. A bit nicer day. Yes, and I believe you've got another EV conversion planned. Are you doing another one of these? Or? Uh, no, a BMW 700 Coupe from 1961. Okay, cool. So yeah, so Tony's going to be doing another EV conversion soon. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what that looks like. Thanks, Tony. So it's great to see the EV conversion and uh, we still got some really uh, interesting um, range of EVs here. A few modified ones as well, which is uh, obviously a bit of charge heads action. Great to see some cars. It's actually drier now, so uh, annoyingly, but it was absolutely tipping it down earlier. But uh, Rusty's over there, straight ahead. Um, still pumping in the miles done 101,000 miles now Clyde's got his Tesla Model 3 which I'm sure you guys have seen before Michael's got his uh, modified Tesla Model 3 he's done a few suspension mods recently mountain pass performance Russell that was going to bring the Tesla powered Lotus he's bought his new shape Tesla Model 3 and look at the number plate how cool is this no gas but then we've got Tom's Tesla Model 3. So let's get some more information about that because this is something special. Look at this. This is something a bit special. A very modified Tesla Model 3. And we've got Adam with us to tell us more about it. Um, so I'm taking it, it's a Tesla Model 3. Is it a short range, long range? Yeah, so what we've got, we've got the 2020, 2020 uh, Tesla Model 3 performance. Yep. Um, what we're good. Ah, yes, I can tell because it's got the red yep. calipers, of course. It doesn't have the uh, the badge at the back that when we bought it, it didn't come with one. So, <laughs> so yeah. nobody knows. Ah, okay, cool. Um, yeah, so what we've done is we, we put the robot Craftsman body kit on it, the narrow body. Okay, which... and what, what does that consist of? So the front bumper? Yep, so you've got the front bumper and we've got the optional carbon fibre splitter, which That's is all modded. real Real carbon fibre? Yep. Nice. Okay. Uh, we've got the Carbon fiber bonnet. That's really, really smart. We were having a bit of a joke earlier uh, with Adam because because it was raining so heavily earlier, it created a little bit of a pool there, which uh, it could have been a bird bath. It could have been uh, a bird bath. It's quite cool. Um, <laughs> this is part of our kit, but we've got carbon fiber, dry carbon fiber mirror caps, and the um, cameras. They're John Carmen. Yep. Uh, part of the kit is this long side skirts. Yeah, they look yeah. smart. Carbon like fiber. That. They're oh. bonded on. Yeah. And it's good for the back. Yep. We've got more of a, a wide, sort of aggressive rear bumper. Um, compared to the original bumper, it kind of slopes in, curves in. Oh, I didn't notice it's got the rear brake light as well. Yeah. Yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit low. It is very <laughs> low. <laughs> you can not see. And this spoiler's very fixed. Yeah. So is this bolted in, is it? or? Yeah, so this is bolted, it's not going anywhere. Um, this was the whole kit. Shout out to Pro Body Works because they did a matchup job on it, and they actually bonded the spoiler on. Nice. And they also paint paint matched yeah. to the original Tesla paint. And I did notice that your car's looking a bit low, Adam. Uh, uh, what suspensions on this? Yeah. So this is uh, this is the new suspension for Tesla Model Three and Ys. Yeah. Uh, it's called On Air, as you can see by the branding that we've stuck up everywhere. Yeah, that is seriously low. <laughs> Obviously, this is for show. Yeah, um, yeah. I wouldn't recommend going over the cattle grid over there at this uh, kind of height. No, I mean, you're just driving a straight line, but I wouldn't recommend it. This is just for show, um, it's for our suspension. So we've got three default heights. Yeah. Default, which is Model 3 performance height. Yep. Um, we've got a higher mode, which is two centimetres higher than that. Obviously, probably that long range height. Yeah. Uh, and then we can go driving low. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, I suppose it does make a bit of difference when it's lower. And you've got the tinted rear windows uh, at the back as well. And I quite like this, you know, I'm not really normally a fan of sun strips, but it actually makes the uh, look quite aggressive. And what do they call this? This uh... Uh, That's a chameleon tint. Ch chameleon? Chameleon. Chameleon. Ch chameleon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's right. We'll get there in the end. Uh, so we've actually gone for a light one because we kind of wanted it a bit more subtle. Yeah. Um, and it also helps. It's a bit more like a privacy glass. Yeah. Uh, privacy screen rather so we're not as exposed and you've got to show us the, the uh, steering wheel yeah so this is uh, this is an upgrade that um, I highly recommend 
So that is the Akama Pub steering wheel. That is seriously steering wheel porn right there, people. <laughs> I'm a bit of a steering wheel pervert, if I've been completely honest. And yeah, that is a lovely bit of kit. How much did you say that was? So that's that's 400, 450. Wow, it's a car. But it is lovely. It is really nice. And it only took half an hour to fit. Wow, okay, that's pretty and good. That does include watching the video. Okay, and what are the other plans? I know that probably a lot of people, seeing that it's still got the chrome on it, would probably say de chrome. Uh, but what are the other plans for the car, Adam? I know it's not yours because it's obviously got your. It's, it's actually got Tom on the number plate, yeah, so yeah, what's, the, what's the story with that? So Tom, actually my brother, and this is, this is our company car, so this is our sort of demo car yeah. for the air suspension and for the body kit. Yeah. Uh, but it does have my brother's number plate on it. Right, uh, got you. Have noticed. But the plans going forward, we'll change the wheels to 19 inch. Yeah. Um, we were going to do chrome it, but the more I've got it, the more I quite like the chrome. So we're going to get wheels to match. Um, similar to that Tesla right there. Uh, similar to Richard's. Yeah, we've yeah. You've got modified Teslas all over the place. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> we can mix and match parts. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, he's, he's also a 19 inch, so it'll look a bit. Yeah, you've got the 19s there, and I think uh, I think Clive's got the 18s on his, and I've just got some uh, wheel caps. <laughs> uh, you know, just uh, mine's the only non. I just hasten to add that. I'm the only one that has the non-performance Tesla, you know. But no, it's it's great to see. I'm glad you brought it along, Adam, and uh, hopefully we can bring it to a few more shows and be interesting to see what other uh, other stuff that you guys are going to be doing to it. But it's certainly a very aggressive car. Um, looks very smart indeed. So thank you very much for showing us around the car. No Appreciate worries. it. No worries, thank you. We should be at uh, the, the Tesla Supercharged show in Brighton, Brichester. Oh, okay, Brichester. brilliant. Um, and maybe a few more dotted around the place in this in this year, but yeah, we'll go to as many as we can. Spot on. And how do we find you? What how what you know? Is it Instagram? Is it what's the crack? Yeah. So if you do see the car, you can obviously scan the QR code. But uh, <laughs> if you do see it around, but uh, we are on Instagram robot underscore EU. So robot underscore EU to find Adam and Tom and you know parts for Tesla to make it look. Yeah more unique there we go spot on cheers Adam though the EV festival has been a complete washout we have managed to see some really cool cars here and Moggy uh, who's been here the whole time uh, has just come by in his bug zapper so let's get a little bit more detail on that So just straight back to Wales then? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realise it was going to look so complete. It's getting there. Yeah. Ready for a bit of fair track testing now. What he's done is the original uncut. Oh, the fun never stops. <laughs> Cut off switch. The handbrake. REV, I wonder what that means. Very cool. And that's the air intake going down into the radiator. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So not a completely wasted day. What's the best way to pull an electric twin motored Tesla race car, a Tesla powered Defender? See you Tony. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.